I'm Zach Shriver. I'm John Hoagland. And I'm Donald York. And this, this is, is the Frisbee, Frisbee Stereo Acuity test. test. First, we'll explain the Frisbee Stereo Test. What you have is multiple test plates. And on the test plate, there's one pattern printed on the front for three out of the quadrants, and half of the pattern for the fourth quadrant is printed on the front, and half is on the back. This creates a disparity. In this test, the observer is asked to detect that disparity in one of the quadrants between the pattern that's printed on the front and pattern printed on the back. This method uses forced choice, so the observer is always required to pick one of the four quadrants which they believe contains that disparity. This is a test of depth perception. By, because of the forced choice methodology of this test, there's a guessing rate of 25% because one of the four quadrants with the disparity can be guessed at that rate. To determine the threshold, you will look at the percentage obtained that is halfway between the guessing rate and perfect observation, which is 100%. So for this test, our threshold will be at 62.5%, which is halfway between the guessing rate of 25% and perfect observation at 100%. This stereo acuity test is performed at nine different test distances, ranging from 25 centimeters all the way to four meters. At each test distance, the patient is forced to do 10 trials apiece for accuracy. So at each test distance, we have a choice between three different plates, six millimeters, three millimeters, and one and a half millimeters. And each time we do a different trial, we rotate the plate so it has a better random chance for the patient guessing. And now for some do's and don'ts. Do keep the top edge of the plate separate from the background of the box. Do keep the plate square in the observer's line of vision. Do not hold the plate against the background. This enables monocular cues. Do check for understanding if the patient understands the test and make sure they choose a quadrant for every trial. Do not allow the patient to choose no quadrants or multiple quadrants. Donald. Do not throw the plate like a frisbee. And now for a demonstration of the test. Now that we have collected all the data through 10 trials at each of the 9 test distances, we are ready to convert the distances to stereo acuity measurements in seconds of arc. To do this, we will use the equation shown here, and we will multiply the constant by the interpupillary distance times the average plate thickness, which in this case is 0.15 centimeters, and we'll divide that by 1.49 times the viewing distance squared. This allows us to determine the percentage of recognition at several levels of disparity based on our test distances. We have also included a chart providing some shortcut estimations from the Frisbee test instructions. Now that we have converted our distances to seconds of arc to determine stereoacuity, we will now plot the function. On the x-axis we will have the disparity in arc seconds, and on the y-axis we will have the percent correctly identified as far as the, how many times the target was correctly identified by the observer out of the 10 trials. Then we will find the point on our function that corresponds to 62.5% and this value is our determined threshold stereo acuity. Thanks for watching our demonstration on the Frisbee Stereo Acuity Test. It's like, for some reason it's not auto. There he goes. Okay. Yeah. 1.49 it's, 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 it
they know that's where I'm at. Plus, I got one. I keep my shades on and Thanks for watching our demonstration on the Spritzy Stereo Q I'm like Tom Cruise off a top gun. Why? Cause they know that's where I'm at. Plus I got one. I keep my shades on in the hot